Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the next episode of The Winding Path. This episode is going to be all about different deities, uh, what to do with them, how to find them, how to work with them, different tips and tricks like that. And I want to start out with a few questions that I have received over Instagram over the years, and it's most of the time it's I how do I know if I'm working with the right deity uh how do I know if these signs and symbols that I'm seeing are for a god or a goddess like what do they mean do I have to work with the deity like I'm not sure I can find one that I work with does that mean that I'm a bad witch or I'm doomed to fail in my spells and my rituals and I just want to say straight off the bat unless you are Wiccan and you are practicing I can't even say that. Unless you are practicing with a very specific religion intent, like Wicca, where they already have the god and the goddess, and that is their deities, like there is no going outside of that, you're not required to work with them. You don't need to have a matron goddess or a patron god to work your magic. It is like having... I tend to I tend to see the relationship that witches have with deities as like a best friend. You have or an older sibling. You have a relationship that is very give and take. Like you work with them and you give to them and they in turn offer their power and their assistance in your workings and their protection and things like that. So yeah, would it be nice to have a deity on your side all of the time for sure, but it's not required to do magic. That is what I want to make very clear. Like it's not something that you absolutely have to have. And I that's okay. I don't want anybody to fall into the same loop that I did after I got outside of Wicca. After almost a decade of practicing Wicca, I, I was like, I, I don't know who to talk to. I don't know who to do my spells with. I don't know like do i have enough power on my own to do the things that i want to do and having that lack of confidence because you suddenly don't have a god or a goddess right there with you kind of sucked and it put me in a position where i very much so pantheon jumped i i chose a lot of i chose the the pantheons that i knew the best because of tv I'll be straight with you, like, I started out looking at, like, the Greek and the Roman uh, gods and goddesses, you know, like, Hercules and things like that because of Disney's Hercules, and then I went to um, the Norse pantheon because of Marvel, and they made Thor look so damn good, so, I mean, why not? And honestly, after uh, working with the Norse pantheon, that was kind of where I, I felt home homely and I worked with them for three years and it it just kind of fizzled out afterwards it was kind of it's kind of like a it was kind of like a friendship or a relationship that you know it's not really working anymore you're not giving or taking enough to make it worth it and I would never want to half-ass a relationship with a deity like I feel like they have way more important things to do than deal with with a half-ass witch that's not that's not their style and i'm not going to do that to them so it got to a point where i sort of i guess broke up with the norse pantheon and i i talked to thor and i talked to freya because that's who i chose as my patron god and, and matron goddess after doing some research that i was you know moving on and i made sure that the offerings and the altar setup that I had for them, I gave away to people that wanted it. They were gonna use it. Maybe they practice. So first off, you don't need to have a deity. All right, we'll just, we'll start with that. We'll just let that sink in. If you want a deity, that's different. And I feel like you should really think about why you want a deity. Are you like me and you don't know what to do without somebody? 
or do you think that it makes you a better witch or a more powerful practitioner to work with the deity? Like these are things that you need to be honest about because if, if it's kind of for selfish reasons, I don't think that deities will work with you in that regard. You know, it, it, it'll be like, well, why do, why am I going to work with you if you're just going to use me? You know, like they're not stupid. They are centuries, if not millennia, years old. Like you, you can't fool a deity. Sorry, friends. So if you are very intent on having a deity, first thing I would suggest is do your research. And I know everybody always says, do your research, do your research, do your research. What I mean is there are hundreds of different pantheons and there are the well-known ones like the Greek and the Roman and the Egyptian and the Norse. And then there's the lesser well-known ones. Like most witches obviously know the Morgan and it's there. She's a Celtic goddess and like Brigid is a Celtic goddess, but they're not Unless you follow a witchcraft account, you probably had never heard of them. I never heard of them before I discovered witchcraft. And so, you know, Google list of pantheons and you will get a Wikipedia page because I know because I've been there and there is literally like over a hundred different pantheons that have so many different backgrounds that could be more in line with who you are and your personal cultural background and you don't even know it like if you're doing if you're doing a whole lot of research and like ancestral work on trying to figure out where you come from you may discover deities that you didn't even know existed but you start working with them and suddenly you know everything's coming up roses type of thing do your research look into the look into the lore look into the mysteries look into the myths look into everything that you can find written about the pantheon that you want to work with because you kind of want to know each god and goddess's background. Like, what is their story? You don't want to piss them off because you didn't, like, do the research. You know, you start talking about, oh, I would like this this goddess to help me with love. And, and her background is all a woman scorned. Probably not going to work out well for you. So you definitely want to, if you're going to look at certain pantheons, you definitely want to do uh, your research and make sure that you know who you're dealing with and you may find that you know one path one pantheon seems like it's going to be really good for you and then you kind of do your your research and you start feeling kind of weird about working with them maybe it's just something you read or something some kind of vibe take that as a hint just because they look fun doesn't mean you should work with them you know it's kind of like one of those if all your friends are going to jump off a bridge are you going to jump off a bridge type of things so doing your research is very, I would say is incredibly important if you're going to try and work with an all powerful being and don't write off the darker beings, you know, like uh, a very good, um, can't say a good friend because I don't know her well enough, but I love her account and I'm sure most of you follow her and it's Alicia Brigida. And I hope I pronounced that right. She works with Lilith. And that is one of the scariest goddesses I think I've ever looked up. And yet, like, it doesn't mean that she's not going to help you out. I mean, she may be more inclined to help a woman. But I don't, I don't know. I don't work with her. I definitely would not want to piss her off. That's for sure. I definitely wouldn't want to piss off anybody that works with her either. So, you know, don't, don't just write off the darker deities because they're not, because they're scary or whatever. Okay. Um, really look at all of them. And if a god or goddess of death speaks to you, doesn't mean you're going to die. There's just obviously something there that they want to work with. That's okay. You also have the opportunity to actually be reached out to by a deity. Um, I had another friend over Instagram and he saw, I, I don't even remember, something crazy like seven dough in a day 
or something like that. And it was at a point in his personal life that he was looking for a little bit more guidance. And if I remember correctly, does or deers are um, sacred to Artemis, I think. And he looked her up and it just made so much sense to him. And he instantly felt better. And he felt at home and he felt like someone had reached out to him. And I love that. Like, I absolutely love that. So if you're seeing a lot of an animal or a flower or you're smelling something constantly when you can't find the source or you're finding feathers on the ground or you're finding cat claws or whatever, take a look at what kind of symbol for what deity that might be because it could be them speaking to you. And that's, that's maybe you never thought you needed a deity or anything like that. And maybe they're reaching out to you because they want to help you. Maybe they've seen an energy and a power in you that they are like, yes, we should, we should help this individual because they deserve it. And because they will grow into something amazing that we can be proud of. Like I said, they're like, they're like best friends or older siblings or even like your husband or your wife or whatever. Like they're amazing and if they're going to reach out to you like you definitely want to to pay attention and looking for constant symbolism is a great way to figure out if a deity is reaching out to you and it really kind of takes the guesswork out of finding one or looking for one if they're going to just reach out to you like that and i think that's amazing i would love if a deity reached out to me i don't know if because i am a cat person i should be looking at bast because that's the first cat goddess i can think of I don't, I don't know. I'll have to look into the Egyptian culture, but you know, it, there's a, there is a possibility that deities will reach out to you. And if they don't, it doesn't mean they think you're a loser or again, a bad witch. Maybe you just don't need them. There is a possibility that you are powerful enough on your own, or they know that you're at a point in your craft or in your life where you're not ready for that relationship with them. And that's also okay. You will grow and maybe someone will just appear to you. Now, creating a relationship with your deity will definitely depend on how you've come to find them or how they've come to find you. So, you know, just like courting someone new or getting to know a new friend, you kind of, you know, like you don't just meet somebody and go, hey, wanna come over and cast spells together? No, you kind of have to get used to each other's energy. So sit down, meditate, talk to them, grab a candle that corresponds with something like with a color of theirs and light it and just talk to them and talk to them for a few weeks or a few months. And, you know, maybe you have a a symbol and you go, you know, I would love to work with you. If so, make the candle flicker or something. Give me a sign. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, like give me a sign, but that's that's probably the best way to do it is to create a relationship. Like you eventually, after a few dates, someone says, hey, do you want to go out with me? So I feel like it's kind of the same thing. You're entering into this creative and spiritual relationship with a higher power and they should be treated with just as much respect as you would give a significant other or a family member. When it comes to giving offerings, um, I've, I've seen a few ways to do it. So you can have a dish on your altar that you kind of top up every day. So you can have, you know, like a cup of water for each deity or just for the one. Um, when I was using, when I, when I had Thor and Freya, uh, for Freya, I had a dish of rose petals and a piece of amethyst. And for Thor, I had a piece of amber and a dish of vervain because those were herbs and crystals that corresponded with those deities. Um, when I was done working with them, I tried to find foods and drinks that I created or bought specifically for them. So after rituals or spells, it's kind of like a share. So, you know, like you take a bite of a brownie, let's say, and then you leave the rest on your altar for the rest of the night, as long as you're not going to have pets or kids that are going to eat it. Um, Same thing with your drink. You can use water. You can use, there's so many different um, beverages that you could use for your deities. And most of them have a preferred drink. 
So you could use, you know, like whiskey or wine or water or cider and, you know, they're not going to think that you don't respect them if you don't drink and you're not going to take a sip, but you can have your own chalice full of your preferred beverage and kind of like cheers to them and then leave that on your altar. Again, provided it's not going to get knocked over or eaten by anybody that it shouldn't. Um, so there's, there's definitely the two ways to do it or both ways. You can have a permanent setup on your altar that you top up and freshen up every day, uh, or put out under like full moons or new moons, or maybe they have their own specific, um, day or planet or moon phase that you put those offerings in a windowsill and kind of recharge specifically for them. Um, you know, like you make, you make a routine specific for those deities. Um, and you just kind of get into that. And eventually I feel like it would be like a conversation. Like you just get up in the morning and go, Oh, good morning, Freya. Like, how are you? Like, oh, I'm feeling kind of this today. And who knows, like maybe throughout the day, you'll start feeling a little bit better because she heard you because you're talking to her and you're noticing her every day, you know? I feel like we kind of went over when to give libations and offerings. So, you know, like either doing it every day or on certain events, but when, when will you know if it isn't working? Like if you're not connecting with the deity in the way that you would like. I would like to think that it's definitely going to be more of a feeling, more of a gut instinct, like, oh, this is like kind of awkward or we're not really vibing in the same way, like the same way that you would react when meeting someone new. Um, or if you feel that maybe, you know, like you asked for assistance on something and it like the spell flopped, so to speak. Obviously they didn't want to give you their assistance or maybe they felt that you didn't need it, but I feel like eventually you will know if it isn't working and that's okay. Like I feel like I'm giving relationship advice, but really it's okay if it isn't working. Just like when it really wasn't working between like myself and my deities, I just politely kind of excused myself from their world, really. Um, and that's fine. Like, again, I don't want anybody to stress about working with a deity because it's not required. Um, and if it, if you try and it doesn't work, then maybe that deity isn't for you. Or like, maybe you just try practicing without a deity for a little while and see how that happens. Like, see how it works. I found that I really do the same type of thing on my day-to-day -day basis as I would with a deity as I do without. So I'm not really sure that I require one. Um, I have been connecting or not connecting, but being drawn to a specific deity lately, but just one. Um, and I've never worked solely with just one before. I usually have a duality of a matron and a patron deity. And that's, that's okay too. Like if you only connect with one, like you don't have to balance it out. You can just connect with a God regardless of your gender or sexuality, or you can just connect with a goddess regardless of your gender or sexuality. Like don't think that because you're a woman or a man that you have to go towards a specific deity. Like, I feel like most women go towards very powerful goddesses because, you know, we want to be really powerful women, like, obviously, but you don't have to do that. Like, if you're connecting with a really powerful male de deity, it doesn't make you any less of a powerful woman and vice versa. Like, like my friend who he is a man and he's connected to Artemis. That doesn't make him weak for being so close with a goddess. Like this is 2020 people. You can, you can have whatever deity you want and connect with and we have just as good as a relationship as you are having a connection with a deity of the same gender or the same sex. So don't worry about it. Okay. Don't stress too much about the type of deity. If you're connecting with someone or you are, um, drawn to someone, don't overthink it. As per most of the things in witchcraft, don't overthink it. Just go with your gut. It's usually right. It's called intuition for a reason. Trust it. Now, one of the questions that you might be having is if you're not practicing with a deity 
how do you practice? Especially if you were like me and you were getting out of Wicca and you're not quite sure how to actually practice without having someone or something specific to talk to, I will tell you, it is actually way easier than you think. It's pretty self-explanatory that witches use, not use, that witches channel um, the power of the earth and the elements and the energy and all around and all of the things. If you're going to work without deities, connect with an element. They are just as powerful and most likely you probably already have one that you gravitate towards. And I hate to be kind of stereotypical, but there are a lot of my friends, both in witchcraft and not, maybe a little pagany, that they gravitate towards their zodiac signs element. Like I'm a Taurus sun and a Capricorn moon and a Scorpio rising. And I very much gravitate towards the earth and herbs and grounding. But if I'm in a lake, you better bet your butt I am in the water. I love being in the water. I love having baths. I love having showers. Like I am so much channeling my top three elements or my top three signs, which is actually two elements. And a lot of the time I, I see that in other people. Like my sister is Libra, Libra sun. And I, she really likes being in a breeze. Like when there's a nice breeze or a warm breeze, like she's very quick to pick up on it. Um, so if you're going to practice without a deity and you aren't sure how to progress, look into elemental work or just again, start talking to the elements, you know, like go outside and talk to the tree or talk to the flower or talk to the bee going by because it kind of represents air or, you know, like dip your toes in a lake and just think about how it feels. And, you know, you might pick up on, um, the earth's heartbeat or the earth's energy signature or the water's energy signature signature. And it might really speak to you. And that's, that's kind of how I started practicing without deities to begin with was I really started connecting with the elements in my practice, like really paying attention to my candles when I lit them and what herbs did what and how it feels to work with different ones. And, you know, like I've noticed that my body craves more water than it used to. And, you know, like being in tune with the elements is a great way to balance yourself, personally speaking start going on nature walks or, you know, like I said, go to a riverbed and kind of just listening, listen to the babble of the water that goes by and you'll, you'll find something to connect with and to work with. And it may take some time. Like it, I've been practicing for 15 years and it's only been in the last year where I've really connected with the earth element because I took the time to do so, which is insane because I'm on maternity leave and I'm chasing after a child, but it was still way more, I had more time at my sacred space and at my altar to connect with that element. And I know that not everybody has that opportunity to have all that time to connect with an element or to even connect with their practice. But you know, like keep a little jar of dirt with you, keep a little jar of each element with you, you know, like put some incense smoke in, in a little jar, which will obviously dissipate eventually, but you know, put some water, put some like ash from, from a candle or like an old candle wick or, and then put a jar of dirt, like keep that with you and just kind of like feel them and meditate with them throughout the day. And, you know, maybe, maybe one type of energy will pop out to you. Like you really need to be grounded. So you really hold on to that jar of dirt. That's a really great way to integrate elemental practices into your everyday life and to get acquainted with those elements. And if you're, and if all you do is practice with the elements and that's it, you know, like you talk to the moon and the sun and you talk to earth, air, fire, water, and that's your, that's your elemental, that's, that's your practice. That is more than okay. So if you are still here after 24 minutes of me going on and on about deities, I thank you. I'm just going to do a quick recap. You do not need to have deities to practice witchcraft. You can if you would like, and if you don't, you can always work with the elements, or you can say screw it to everything and just work with your own magic. That's cool too. If you do want to practice with deities, do your research. Look into all the different pantheons, read up on the myths, the lore, the legends, and when you do find someone that you want to work with, craft a relationship. This is something that you should work at, just like you would work at any other relationship in your life. Figure out what they like and offer it to them on a schedule that works with you and your practice. Know when to give and also know when it is no longer working. I hope that that helps. 
All right, guys, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time, we'll be continuing the basic practice tips and techniques by going over the lunar rituals. So not only the moon phases, but how to perform a lunar ritual, things you can do, and also the different moons for each month of the year. Did you know that I have a book out? A Witch's Book of Shadows, Spells, Rituals, Sabbaths, and Journal Grimoire launched on the new moon in September. This second and updated edition of the Kickstarter journal has 30 more pages, spell and ritual excerpts from my personal Book of Shadows, added blank space in the grimoire to put in your own correspondences, and a new grimoire section all about the zodiacs. You can buy the book on Amazon in softcover, hardcover, or ebook, or order signed copies through my personal website at www.awitchaloneshop.com. Also, starting October 1st, I'll be launching a Patreon. Monthly printable Book of Shadows pages, Discord discussions, and free tarot readings are just part of the perks you'll be able to make use of. Come find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook under A Witch Alone, and make sure you say hi, because I always love meeting new followers. And as always, let's make some magic.